moving. All right, well, let's get this party started. So I wanna welcome everybody to our Zoom tonight. Uh, my name's Amanda Macaluso. I am the girls camp director. Um, I grew up in Australia actually, and uh, came on over to be a counselor here for um, a summer many moons ago and enjoyed it so much. Uh, I will be celebrating my 32nd summer with Hayawena Camps this, this year. So welcome. And my name is Dave DeLuca. I get to serve as the executive director of our camps, but uh, I'll tell you a little more about this a little later, but I'm going to be stepping in and serving as the interim camp director of our boys camp this summer and, and looking very much forward to it. So again, we're so pleased that you all have joined us tonight and we'll take a little while to explain our camps and certainly give you an opportunity to, to ask some questions toward the end. All right. And now my camera, the thing is not, uh, not progressing, we'll see. There we go. Well, I uh, apologize for the te technological difficulties right off the bat, but uh, just for those who are, are traveling a distance or may not know about our camps, we're located in northern Michigan. Northern Michigan is extraordinarily beautiful. Uh, you'll see some great pictures of our camps, but uh, our two camps are located about 40 miles apart. Hayawenta, uh, the HWH rectangle you see there is a little further north and located right on the shores of Torch Lake. And then about 40 miles south, just outside of Traverse City, you'll find our Butis Hayawenta, our girls camp. Uh, again, a stunning natural area, more fresh water than I've ever seen in my life and uh, wonderfully, wonderfully long summer days. We're a, we're a nonprofit organization. We're a YMCA. Amanda will tell you a little bit more about that later. But as a, as a YMCA, we have a mission statement and a vision statement. This is what we want to see happen for our campers while they're at camp. And we'll train our staff on these statements and what it means to inspire youth, what we mean by outdoor adventure, and how we want um, our young people empowered, confident, and connected. So this is a, a significant part of our training and uh, will be carried through with everything that we do at camp in the summer. So another uh, thing that we would love to share with you all is our core values. Um, as a YMCA, we've come up with some great core values to share with every, everyone. We talk about this on opening day with our campers. We talk about it throughout staff training with our staff. Um, it's just a nice um, way of kind of encompassing what we do and how we do it and how we treat others. Um, we feel that our programs are very much vehicles to teach these core values to everybody. The other thing we love to share is our camp motto. So our camp motto is each for all and all for each. Again, it's just a, a way of making sure that everyone's included, everyone's a part of the team and we're all in this together. Another thing, and this is one of my favorite things, is the longevity of our camps. We have had both camps in operation for over 100 years. Uh, next year is a big year for all of us. Uh, the boys camp will be celebrating 120 years and girls camp 110. Um, that just brings with it lots of traditions and lots of experiences that people have had for years and years. And we really love that there's just multi-generations of families as well. Um, we've got third generation families and fourth, and we even have a couple of fifth generation families. So again, something that we've been doing for a long time. We love um, at our girls camp, we recognize all our first year campers with a little ceremony um, and everyone gets a little copper moon and welcomes them to the, to the community. And at boys camp, they have a little uh, tradition on their opening day with their campfire. So we again, recognize all our first year staff and campers. We also love our fifth year recognition as well. Um, if you've been coming back for um, five years, you get, a, again, another little ceremony and another little celebration. And the boys camp have the opportunity of putting your name there in the boathouse, which is the big photo there. And at girls camp, we get a silver moon. So again, you can collect them all and wear them with pride and you're part of the part of the team. 
So a little bit about Girls Camp. Um, here we are at Girls Camp. We've got about 130 acres of um, property. We've got about a half mile of shoreline right on our Butis Lake, which is beautiful. Um, we've got at this the big colored building um, on the screen is our dining hall and the office. So that's where you'll drive in and check in on your first day. The, the building that's covered in snow, which we still have snow on the ground um, here at camp, but that is our my favorite building actually it's trailside lodge it was built in 1920 it used to be our dining hall um, now it is a great space for indoor activities the arts and crafts room is is in there um, we have a little stage and we have some games and things in there so um, that's a really neat spot and then we have four divisions within our camp program um, so third fourth and fifth grade are in one division sixth and seventh are in another um, we then have the thicket and then Niji, and these areas are cabins are centrally located within that division group. Um, eight campers and two staff in each cabin. There's five cabins in each division, and centrally located bathrooms with hot and cold running water and um, nice showers and everything. So um, they're nearby. But we also have uh, a senior staff member that oversees each division. So um, it's like a little community within our camp community. And Boys Camp, Camp Hayawenta, located on Torch Lake. The property is a little bit larger, almost 550 acres of property, and it's um, incredible lakefront shoreline. It's fields and forests. It's about 35 buildings, some that, that date back, uh, as the boathouse in the large photo here does, to 1907. Uh, some of our other historic buildings, the old dining hall in the upper right of your screen, and then Bonbright Lodge, which is the center of many of our all camp activities. The lower level serves as where we stage all of our wilderness trips out of. So there's a real sense of history when you walk through the, the paths and the roads of, of Camp Hayawenta. And uh, the natural environment, again, is just absolutely stunning. Just like Amanda said, there are four divisions at our boys camp where the boys are divided um, into larger groups by grade and then into cabin groups by the particular grade that you happen to have finished. Four divisions, again, by grade, each division, a cluster of cabins and a wash house, a centrally located wash house within. So some of the things we've taught, told you about so far, great locations and history and, and facilities, a lot of camps have those, but we believe that there are some things that really set us apart from so many of the other camps that are out there. And we're gonna share with the next few slides just what we think some of those ingredients are that, that make us a, a great camp to choose. One of them is, get ready for this, uh, we are totally unplugged at camp. That means that uh, in our cabins, there's no electricity. Certainly in the larger buildings like our health center and our dining hall and our office, we've got electricity. But we're going to ask that you leave your cell phone at home, leave your video games at home, um, and talk to people and enjoy and build friendships. And, and we believe that by leaving all those distractions behind, you actually build better connections with all the people that are around you. So another thing about our camp is our session lengths. So our camp programs are two or four weeks. We just feel that this gives us a little bit more time to really get to know kids in our cabin and kids in our division. Um, we also think it's a, it's a nice um, extended break from being unplugged, but it also gives us enough time to do all the fun activities. And I've got a slide coming up that, that will show you all the fun things that we can do, um, but this gives us enough time to do all the on-site programming and all that skill development, but also allows us to do our wilderness adventure trip as well. So two weeks and four weeks, they go very, very quickly um, and we keep busy uh, each and every day. So that first day, so it's one of those questions we often get, especially uh, obviously for our new staff or our new campers, that first day can be a little overwhelming. There's a lot going on. There's lots of people to meet. You've got to move in and get settled. And we want to make sure that we're spending that extra time to, to make you feel welcome and share with, 
with you where everything is, how the schedule works, like getting to know people. I always try and make a challenge to everybody that at that first meal, you've got to know at least everybody's name in your cabin and something awesome and fun about them. So again, really trying to make sure that that first day is a day that we all get to know everyone and, and kind of get into the camp groove. With parents, we ask that you um, you can stay as long as you like, but don't stay too long. Um, definitely make that transition and and let us uh, take over from there and, and we'll show you ways to keep in touch while you're at home and, and your camper is having fun at camp. I've already covered this a little bit, but boy, the, uh, the natural environment of our camps, again, large expanses of, of property, uh, beautiful sunrises, incredible sunsets, all the sounds of nature. Um, you're likely to see all sorts of animals, but to hear the wind rustling through the trees, to look up and see all the stars in the sky, what incredible places these camps are. Uh, also, uh, I, I'm a relatively new transplant to Michigan, but I've learned just how incredibly long the summer days are. By 5.30 in the morning, it's getting light and the sun sets somewhere around 10 o'clock. So long, very busy days. And the emphasis is always going to be on our campers being outside. Certainly we have uh, rainy day activity areas and, and games and things that we can play when we must be inside. But if we can be outside, we're going to be outside because it's just uh, such a wonderful way to spend the summer. Uh, we focus on the cabin group. And as Amanda said, that's roughly eight eight campers and two staff that live together for the, the length of the two week or the four week session. Uh, many camps place their kids in cabins, but then those eight or 10 kids go in many different directions in the course of the day, maybe returning to the cabin uh, at nighttime or, or eating meals together. But we believe that that cabin group is really the family unit at camp. So we're going to spend mornings doing activities by cabin group, learn so the kids will learn how to get get along together. They'll get to try many different things and sample what camp has to offer each day. Perhaps a different camper might be the leader of the group. Uh, the cabin groups will also share their meals together in the dining hall. Uh, the key, of course, are our cabin leaders who can work hard to build relationships among the kids in the cabin and plan creative and and fun activities. And then the icing on the cake is that our wilderness trips, which Amanda will talk about in a moment, are also done by cabin groups. So those relationships that are formed in camp uh, get strengthened even more on an out of camp trip. So this is my favorite slide. Uh, this is where we share with you all the fun activities that we get to do every day and how the day looks. Um, so the first thing every day, if you want to, it's a very optional, but you can jump out of bed, grab your swimsuits and zip down to the lake and jump in. If you do that every day, you get to join the polar bear club and you get a little certificate at the end of the session. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Some say that is the best way to start the day. Others don't. Uh, for example, me, but it is fun to see everybody else do it. Um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner at the right times of the day. Um, after breakfast, eight cabin, eight campers and two staff in each cabin. As you can imagine, just a little cleanup is needed. So we do that on a daily basis. After we've done a little cabin cleanup, we do cabin activities. So some of these activities that you see um, down the bottom, archery, arts and crafts, volleyball, frisbee, ropes course, all of those things are options as a cabin group. Um, so again, you sit down and talk to, uh, amongst your cabin mates what you would like to do throughout the, uh, the week and come up with a great plan for two cabin times in the morning. After lunch, we have a little rest hour. So this is a great time for you to have a little nap if you like, but you can also write home, read a book, uh, write in your journal, just have that downtime and a little bit of quiet time. After rest hour, we have an instruction period. This is more of an individual choice and more of a skill development activity. So again, a lot of the activities that you see on the screen that you can choose, um, but it's more involved and you get to meet kids from other cabins um, and not necessarily do things with your cabin friends. That's It's, it's an, an opportunity to meet other kids in other cabins. Um, at 4.20, the, the waterfront is open, so G-Swim. It is a time to go swimming. Uh, you can zip down to the waterfront and go for a swim if you like. If you don't particularly want to swim that day, 
Um, there are other activities that you can choose or just have some time to kind of um, enjoy some of the other activities and, and kind of hang out a little bit. After dinner, this is where it gets fun. After dinner, well, it's all fun, but this is where um, the evening activities, it could be an all camp game. It could be a campfire. It could be a skit night. It could be an individual choice. It could be a theme night. There's lots of evening activities and lots of fun that happens after dinner and it's all different. So depending on the day and what the program director has come up with, um, that's the evening activity. We tend to wrap up the day about 9.30, 10, lights out at 10. Um, it's a nice way at, at night, we have a evening routine. At boys camp, we call it, call it good of the house. At girls camp, it's devotion. Um, and it's just a good way to kind of close out the day, kind of check in with everybody in your cabin. Um, sometimes there's a little question to ask and and it's interesting to see what answers are. And, and again, just time to kind of reflect and, and kind of wind down from the day. That's Monday through Friday. Saturday is what we call Super Saturday. So it's an all camp, all theme, all fun, crazy fun day. Um, it could be a, a Harry Potter theme. It could be the Olympics. We've had Cowboys versus Aliens. So a little bit of a comp competition. Um, again, just depends on the program director and, and the thoughts that they've got for the theme. And then Sundays are a little uh, low key. We do a little bit more of a cabin cleanup on Sunday because we've all been there for a week. So our cabin needs a little bit more of a cleanup. Um, and then we have a little chapel service and the chapel service, both camps have these really nice chapels right at the water. Um, you can look out over the water. Our oldest cabin um, always presents the chapel service. And it's really just a reflection um, and the topics that they kind of talk about and, and work around um, a friendship and being challenged. And again, the core values that we use and talk about at the Y. So um, that's kind of Sunday. And then we do it all again the next week. So keeps it keeps busy. The days are busy for sure. The other thing that we really like and we are excited to share with you is the progressive trip program that we have. So um, starting, finishing third grade, campers come and they do all the fun activities at camp, but we also have our offsite camp. Do you want um, the camera on or not? Wilderness Adventure. <laughs> um, so finishing third grade, stay overnight on camp. Um, and then the trips get a little more challenging. We feel like they're appropriately challenging for the age group. Um, and we get more, um, the, the trips become further away, a little more challenging and a little longer in length. So Sleeping Bear Dunes, for example, is our fifth grade program. The campers go for three days and two nights. Um, we go to Pitched Rocks National Park and the campers stay for a week. And then our Royal National Park is another uh, state uh, national park that we go to. We do go to national parks and state parks throughout Michigan and Southern um, Ontario. And then our awesome oldest camper trip is to Alaska. So we send our campers out to Alaska. They literally hike a mountain um, all the way out. We fly into Juneau and then uh, catch a ferry to Haines and we use an outfitter out there. But and I think on the call, we have a couple of staff that are actually heading to Alaska this year as the <laughs> as the counselors. So, but yeah, any questions you have about the Pacific specific program that you're registered for, we're happy to chat to you about that. Our website has lots more details and a great packing list that corresponds to each trip as well. So those are those are the ingredients that we believe set us apart. It's everything from the unplugged nature to the incredible outdoor environment. It's the focus on the cabin. It's the, the very carefully thought out daily schedule that includes individual skill activity, large group activity, cabin group activity. And then of course, it's, it's those trips. Uh, many camps do an in-camp experience or an out-of-camp experience, but we combine both into a session and try to give our campers the best of both worlds. So what comes out of that? Well, Friendships are made, memories are made, and it's incredible what happens to a group that's together for two weeks or four weeks, including uh, a wilderness experience away from camp. Some of the bonds that are formed the first year that kids are together in a cabin last until they're adults. We recently did a, a survey with some of our alumni asking them about their, their most treasured memories and the impact of camp, and it was wonderful to be able to read about uh, adults still friends with with people they shared a cabin with 30 or 40 or 50 years ago 
uh, there's a great deal of self-confidence that's gained from trying things and, and maybe not succeeding the first time, but you keep trying to get up the climbing wall or you keep aiming for the bullseye in archery and eventually you get there. So you build a sense of confidence and there's some growth that comes with that. And we like to call them 21st century skills. Our campers are learning how to communicate, how to collaborate, how to compromise, how to work together as a team. Um, and all this comes out of spending two weeks or four weeks at camp. Now, there are some other things we want to share with you, and these might be things that maybe parents are a little more interested in than campers, but we'll go through them quickly, and uh, maybe it'll help you understand a little bit more about our experience. So this is always exciting to see where everybody is from. Our campers are from all over the U.S., lots of Midwest, of course, um, being, being quite close. We also have had last year, 36 states were represented by our camper population. So lots of kids from all over and also international campers. So I know that there's someone from um, Mexico on the call. So that's exciting. This is a slide we like to share with our parents uh, more than anything, but ACA or American Camp Association is accreditation process that um, we want to do. You don't have to do it. Um, we feel that it is industry standards um, and we want to make sure that we're um, operating as safely and following as, um, as many standards and appropriate um, procedures and policies as possible. We are also a Y camp, so um, we're part of the YMCA. We are not associated with a branch. We're actually an independent Y, which just means we're just our camps. So we concentrate on just our camp programs. There's always lots of questions about the waterfront. Again, our camps have extraordinarily long lakefront areas and very um, extensive waterfront programs, swimming and boating programs. So uh, the waterfront is an area where we have a, a, a strong focus on safety. Each camp has a, a full-time seasonal waterfront director who oversees all the activity down along the lakefronts. Uh, many of our staff are lifeguards. We train other staff to be lifeguards during our pre-camp staff training. They're, they're um, assigned to various positions on the waterfront to keep our campers safe. But also on opening day, we're going to ask that every camper do what we call a swim assessment. We want you to get in the water. We want you to show us how well you swim. And we will rate your swim ability and you'll be given a buddy tag. If you see in the upper right corner there, you can see a little bit of the, the buddy board at Camp Hayawenta. But your buddy tag uh, is a certain color and that denotes which part of the swimming area you can swim in. The other thing is that when you go swimming, you'll always swim with a buddy. So two tags will be placed on a board and our lifeguards and waterfront staff will be able to tell at any time exactly how many pairs of swimmers are in the water. So we take a great deal of time and effort to keep our campers safe on the waterfront. Uh, of, of course, also anytime anyone is in a boat, regardless of how well you swim, we're going to ask that you wear a life jacket. Uh, health care at camp is important. Each camp has a, an extraordinarily well-stocked infirmary or health center. Uh, these buildings were built just in the last few years, and they're, they're very extensive. There's an examination room where also uh, all medications are kept under lock and key. Our, our two health officers at each camp live within this building. There's a larger ward room where campers who are not feeling well and maybe need to spend the night here instead of in their cabin can come. Um, and this is where um, uh, there's also an isolation room should we need to to keep one camper separate for any reason. Our uh, all our healthcare procedures are approved by a physician. We call them our standing orders, and we can be in contact with our camp physicians at any time. Uh, it's also key for parents to understand that should there be any anything beyond the typical bumps or bruises that happen at camp, we're going to call you. We're going to let you know what's happening with, if your child needs to spend a night in the infirmary. And certainly, uh, if should we ever need to take a child, off, take a camper off site to one of the nearby hospitals, we're going to call you right away to let you know what's going on. Uh, you'll be asked to fill out a health form in advance of the summer that gives us a great deal of information about your child's uh, health care needs so that we can make sure that we're serving them well. 
So the next slide, I'm sure you're all curious about the food. Um, the food is great. There's lots of variety. It's very camper friendly, but as well as that, it's also healthy. Um, we do have a salad bar with healthy options for um, everyone at lunch and dinner. We also cater as much as we can to um, our food allergies. So if you have, we're gluten aware, nut aware, um, I think there's dairy aware, and, and vegetarian options is definitely a, a possibility as well. So again, if any of these things are um, describing you, we just need to let us know. You can put it on your health form or just email the camp directors and we pass that on to our food service staff so we can always have good options for you. Um, the, the meals are also what we say is a program area. There's always announcements, there's always songs, um, something is always happening in the dining hall. So even though it's just a meal, it is also um, a camp program. Well, one of the, the key parts of camp obviously is our staff and, and I see a couple of smiling staff on the, uh, on the call this evening, but uh, we're, we're really proud of our staff. So many of them have grown up as campers in our camp. So when they are the cabin leader for a group of first time campers, they know exactly what it was like to come to camp uh, as a first time camper, as a younger, a younger boy or girl. Uh, we go through about two and a half weeks of staff training with our staff. There are certification trainings, as you see in the lower part of this screen. But after, after we get our, our staff certified and, and highly trained, we're going to, we're going to teach them all about uh, behavior management, creatively leading activities, safety and emergency procedures. So they emerge from that training extraordinarily uh, professional and, and ready to go in, in delivering a great experience to our campers. Uh, of course, a couple of other things. There's a, a pretty uh, stringent selection process. All staff are background checked. Um, those who drive for us have, have driving checks done. And then in addition to the counselors and the frontline program staff, we also have a, a group of senior staff, we call them our administrative staff, who oversee the various areas of camp and, and are uh, really the extension of the camp director's eyes and ears out there uh, in camp. So while we're all at camp having such a fun time and you're all at home wondering what's happening, there's a couple of things that you can do so that you can um, get a snippet of the fun. Um, we use Bunk One, which is a photo sharing platform. We update the photos at least every other day, but sometimes it's even every day. Uh, you can have a little snapshot of what's happening and see if you can see your camper. Um, Bunk One also has a really neat feature of face recognition. So you, it is a little bit more of a fee, but then you can log on and your, the camper, your camper's photos come right to the top so that you don't have to look through everything. Um, that is also Bunk One, our way of getting my email back and forth to you. So you can email your camper. Um, we print it off and then we um, put it in their mailbox just like a regular letter. We also have Bunk with Bunk One, the option of you sending a second sheet of paper that the camper can write on. Um, they can write just an old fashioned way. They can't necessarily type and email you that way, but they've got this um, option on Bunk One that you um, get the letter from the camper and then we scan it back to you. So you'll get a letter back. We do everything we can to make sure the camper does that. Um, sometimes they're having too much fun and they just don't get to do it. Um, we do encourage also letters um, the old fashioned way, snail mail. On, on Tuesdays, we have um, a meal, a mail meal or a ticket Tuesday is what we call it at girls camp. And it's another way to encourage the campers to write home to you. Um, the other thing is we will send progress reports as well. So if you're um, your camp, your division leader, the, that senior staff member that oversees that division that your camper is in, they'll send you a specific email, um, just kind of an overview of that program and what that um, your campus cabin is up to. Um, but also any questions that you have, if you've got any questions at all, please feel free to give us a call or an email and we can follow up and make sure you get the answers. But yeah, things happen in at camp and sometimes no news is good news. So keep that in mind as well. I do like to share on, on this screen that uh, we always have some amusing stories of parents that are that are looking at, at uh, photos. I've had the call from the, the parent that has seen a picture of their child and said, you know, he, he just doesn't look happy. Can you, can you find out how he's doing? And, and of course we always get the, uh, the, 
the call from the parent that three days in a row they've seen their child in the same shirt and that perhaps it's time for uh, a change of clothing. So we'll uh, we'll manage all those things too. So um, I introduced myself at the beginning of this presentation as the executive director of Hayawenta Camps, but I'm also going to be stepping in this summer as the interim director at our boys camp. Uh, Bill Hinton, who's on this call managing the, the technical aspects of it, is actually wrapping up his tenure at Hayawenta. Tomorrow is his final day at work. Uh, Bill will be moving on to become the CEO of a Y camp in Pennsylvania, and, and we couldn't be happier for him. It's, a, it's an extraordinary opportunity for Bill. Uh, we're certainly disappointed to, to have him leave us. He, um, he's done some great things in his time at Hayawenta. Uh, unfortunately, the timing of Bill's leaving just doesn't allow us to go through a really elaborate search process, pick his successor, and bring that person in in time to manage the summer this year. Uh, that new director would probably arrive in May. That's a little late for somebody to come in and inherit a full staff and try to learn a new camp program. So I've been around for the last couple of years, and I've seen things at, at our boys' camp. I see the many things that we do extremely well, but I also see some things that I think we could do a little bit better. So I'm going to step in. I know the staff, uh, many of the staff, and I'm I'm getting to know the camp families. So I think it's going to be a relatively seamless transition, but I'm going to serve uh, in two roles this summer as the, as the executive director and the um, summer camp director. But what will allow me to do this and, and for it to go well, I'm hiring three extra seasonal administrative staff to help me manage different aspects of camp. One will oversee program, one will oversee cabin life, and the third will oversee the operational side of camp, food service and healthcare and the office. And with those three extra people, I'm highly confident that we can we can make this work and it's going to be a great summer at our boys camp. So I think we just have a few quick questions before we move on to our little quiz here that we have at the end. Um, there was a question about Sleeping Bear Dunes. So with all our trip program, um, we will make sure that the campers are aware of where they're going and what their expectations are out in the field. So we'll sit down and we'll go through um, the itinerary and we'll show them the maps. We also want to make sure all our equipment is ready um, and people know how to use it and care for it. Uh, we'll also go over some of the menus, um, what they're going to be eating out on the trail. We also want to really make sure that we're doing our Leave No Trace program as well. We want to leave our state parks and national parks exactly how we found them, or, or maybe even better. Um, so if you, I think it was Ly Lila, is, if, do you have any other questions specifically about the Sleeping Bear Dunes? If you want to jump on and ask the question, we're happy to follow up. Oh, um, so like, um, so I've heard about Sleeping Bear Dunes from one of my friends who's been to camp before. Awesome. So, um, but she was saying things like that you, um, like that you're not supposed to change clothes. Is that true? That you're like not recommended to change clothes there? Um, well, we pack minimally, so we probably can't pack too much, but you certainly can take a couple of t-shirts and a couple of pairs of shorts and a sweater. So you're going to have everything that you need and you're okay. gone for three days. So you head off the first day, you change because you're out in the field on the second day, you change on the third day and then you zip on home. So um, we'll, we'll go through that with you and make sure that we've got what you feel, you know, comfortable with, and we'll go through and make sure you've packed everything that we need you to pack as well. Okay. And, um, do they have bathrooms there? At Sleeping Bear Dunes, there are bathrooms. Okay. Yes. They're yeah. not, they're just the standard little national park bathrooms. They're not fancy, but they mm -hmm. definitely have bathrooms. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Well, thank you. We'll see you soon. <laughs> And then I think there was one other question. I think Cheryl, you have some questions as well. If you want to jump on. But yeah, I only I had a couple of questions about uh, about the trip that I was going on. It's the four it's a four week sixth, seventh grade, I think, where you go hiking and in pitch, uh, pitch and rocks, right? Is this I think so. Is this Gwen? 
Yes, this is Gwen. Hi, hi Gwen. <laughs> I I can chat to you about Pitched Rocks anytime you want, but Pitched Rocks is another great opportunity. It's finishing sixth grade, both boys camp and girls camp go up there. Um, Again, that's a national park. So that's uh, a permitted um, park and we've already secured the permits and we know where we're going from one night to the next. Um, It's beautiful up there. The lake shore is amazing. You actually spend some time walking along Lake Superior to your next campsite. Um, But again, we can chat also if you are wanting more information there is a lot of details on our website so jump on our website take a look at the program that you're interested in or you're going to be doing um, and take a look at the other um, explanations and also the packing list which is really um, specific for each program as well okay thank you awesome and we are recording this so i'll put this on the website um, and show and and, and maybe even Facebook as well, so that you can all jump on later and, and share it with other friends or people that couldn't make the call. All right, any other questions? Oh, there's a question about bugs. Do you wanna, do you wanna follow up with bugs, Dave? Sure, bugs are my specialty. Um, <laughs> Fortunately, we we don't have a, a significant insect problem. I, w- I was shocked when I came to northern Michigan and found that on the shores of our lakes, we really don't have uh, much of a, of a mosquito issue. The breeze from the lakes helps to keep it down. Uh, we do have insect repellent in our camp store for when it might be needed. Uh, if you do bring it, we prefer that you bring the pump and not the aerosol type or, or the, the rub-on type. But um, Minimal needs, Amanda, you maybe can comment a little more than I can about uh, insect encounters on trips, but I know on our camp properties, we're, we're relatively insect free. There does tend to be some bugs in some of our um, and, um, destinations. So uh, pitched rocks, I think there tends to be um, some black flies. Um, and some of our old trips, we actually send um, mosquito nets for those campers. Um, just to minimize the the effects, but we ask that you bring some of your, what you're used to as a repellent. So whatever you've been using um, at home and it feels good for you and you're used to that, if you could bring that with you just so that we can use what you have um, and try and avoid as much as we can. But bugs are out there, yeah. (laughs) Yeah. All right. what else? Megbo, what did you say about bugs? Uh, saying how they mostly come out at night, if anything, on trips. I mean, you're walking, you're moving the whole time. And when they're out at night, it's a good indication that it's bedtime and it's time to hide in beds. <laughs> That's awesome. So Megbo is one of our senior staff members. She's coming back this year for what? How many years is this for you? This will be 13, which oh, is awesome. 13, and she has been to selected to head off to Alaska with the oldest group. So, um, and you'll see her on site, the session that she's not at camp. And I'm going to call you after this uh, to let you know what you might be doing. <laughs> awesome. Well, any other questions? Well, I've got a question for everybody. If there, you want to there just- are a couple of questions in the chat. Okay. Um, that I'm going to kind of ask. So um, someone asked about cabin mates and do we get, um, do you get, do you get to know your cabin mates before or do you just meet folks? So maybe talk about cabin mate requests. You or me, Dave? Uh, Why don't you take this one to start? Okay. So yes, we do ask if you've got a camp friend um, that you would like to be in a cabin with but please don't panic if you are coming and don't know anyone yet. Um, We will certainly make sure that you have seven new friends by the first day. Um, But if you do have someone that you are coming to camp with and you're in the same cabin, the same program at the same time and both want to be together, let us know so we can make that happen. Yeah, it's important that you understand that if if you are in different grades and potentially doing different programs, we wouldn't be able to put you in the same cabin together, but that doesn't mean that you wouldn't be able to see friends during certain times of the day, during G-swim or during the afternoon instruction, uh, in the dining room, and then also obviously during all camp programs, uh, kids of different age that know each other will will have opportunities to be together. 
Do you have any others, Bill, that we've missed? Um, there's a couple that are um, uh, kind of asking about their trips. I told them to stay on um, after we stop recording and uh, we'll go over those uh, specific trips. Great. Awesome. Well, I've got a question for everyone in the chat. If you could just put in the chat if this sounds fun and you're super if you're super excited about coming. <laughs> what about Max and Lawson? You guys look like you're having fun and excited for camp. Uh, yeah, I um, sail like opties and I know there's some sunfish, I think. Uh, uh, we've, we've got butterflies. Butterflies, yes. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm excited to try a new boat of uh, sailing. Yeah, and I awesome. even a little bigger one. <laughs> and sailing on Torch Lake is incredible. Yeah, I bet it. All the pictures look like it's great. Yeah. Right. I, yeah, uh, I'm in to play lacrosse, and um, uh, is sailing is not my top thing, but it's uh, like I I do it with my brother. Um, but I mainly, I mainly play across, but yeah. Swim. Yeah. You also like to swim yeah. a lot. Stuff like that. You can swim every single day if you like. Yeah. Yep. Awesome. Well, I think uh, fifth grade, if you're finishing fifth grade at both camps, you will be going to Sleeping Bear Dunes. Um, that was one of the questions. And so now we've got some questions for you. We're going to see if you guys were listening. The first one is, what are the names of the two lakes that our camps are on? Super easy. Megvo, what do you got? <laughs> um, can I phone a friend? <gasps> what? Ellie no. McJoint, can you help me out with this question? All right, phone a friend. Ellie? Arbutus and Torch. Yay. All right, our next question. We'll see if we get a camper to answer this one. What are, can anyone name four of our core values? And there's seven of them. What do we think? Does anyone want to jump on and let us know which ones? Uh, respect, responsibility, caring, and honesty. Nice. Uh, who is this oh, chatting? Oh, environmental oh, Max and, something, like being- Environmental nice. stewardship. Yeah. Nice. All right, Dave, what are our answers? Let's Ooh. see how they went. Awesome. Inclusion was one uh, and teamwork are all seven. Good job. All right. How do we keep track of our swimmers when they're in the water? Anyone want to jump on and let us know what they think? Isn't it by the buddy system? Good job, Gwen. Buddy board. Mm -hmm. And, and then the I think final. this is our last one, and I mentioned them all, but we go to state parks and national parks and actually a provincial park in Canada. But can anyone name three of the national parks here in Michigan that we go to? I know right, one about Sleeping Bear Dunes. Good job. You did that last year, right? Yes, I did. Yay. All right, what about Lois? Are you there? Do you want to tell us what the other two are? Pop in, Lois. Jump in, Lois. I'm here. <laughs> um, okay, National Parks, Isle Royal, and National Lakeshore, Pictured Rocks, Na yeah. National Lakeshore. Yeah. Did I miss anything, Will? And Sleeping Bay. And Sleeping, and sleeping Bay. Bay. Yeah. Is North Manitou? Yeah. North Manitou. North Manitou is oh, part true. of Sleeping Bear Dunes. North Manitou is part of Sleeping Bear Dunes. So. Okay, beautiful. Yeah, you got it. Awesome. Well, thank you everyone for joining us tonight. Um, hopefully we've answered a lot of your questions and got you excited for the summer. But if there are any others, you you know, we're happy to to hang on and, and answer any specific questions that you might have.